What is going on guys? Dr. D here from One Hive Invicta bringing you the week 5 CWL Rising recap where One Hive Invicta faced up against the undefeated Gunma Samurai. Uh, this is a group from Japan um, who is currently undefeated in the CWL. So uh, a very solid group. Um, we, we tried to give them a run for our money. Came up just a bit short here. So they stay undefeated. Uh, okay, without any further ado, let's hop in and have a look at the war statistics. Here are the basic war statistics. As you can see, um, Gunma Samurai gave us a run for our money, 91.67% uh, to 93.97%. Uh, 23 triples to 25 triples. The difference came down to uh, two dip fails um, by us. Uh, so we had two Town Hall 11 fails on Town Hall 10s. Uh, neither side had any um, 10v10 triples. Um, we were able to clear 9s without any dips. They did require... Uh, one dip on a nine, and so we will come down here and check it out. That dip was on me, actually, right here. Uh, number nine was Town Hall 10. Um, and if we uh, look here at defenses, starting with our uh, Town Hall 9s right there at Bella, um, a, a lot of good defenses. Um, Clutch had two, Big Tex had two, Big Tex just got promoted to 2.0. Two, uh, 2 um, I had four, uh, a couple more twos, and Tanyu had three, very, uh, very solid performance. Um, okay, uh, as far as uh, six packs go, you can see that um, I had a six pack, and, boy, I think there were quite a few, actually. Let's flip through here. Clutch had a six-pack. Smurf, I don't think, did. Matt had a six-pack. Um, no. Big Tex, no. James, I thought James said Bullseye had a six-pack. I know for sure. Um, Lee? Nope, not quite. Uh, no, no. Uh, Tanyu had a six-pack. Um, yep. Uh, Maxwell had a six pack and that was it. So uh, a number of six packs on our side. Um, let's hop over and let's have a look at the uh, attacks that we're going to watch. So uh, we're going to start out with number 12 and this was um, Bazu. And Bazu is coming with a Penta. You can see um, he's got four, uh, four hounds, 17 loons. Uh, he's got a um, CC <laughs> hound, and you know, um, looking at this troop comp, uh, he went in 15 troops shy. I wonder what he was thinking, because um, a full-on Penta is 20, yeah, it's 20 loons, so... <laughs> I don't know what uh, what was uh, going on here. I don't know why Bazu uh, wound up being shy troops. I wonder. I don't even know if he knows that he was shy troops, but uh, he was. Um, so anyway, uh, sends in all of his hounds all at once. Um, actually, sent three hounds over on this side, the the top side up here, hoping that the queen would go towards them. I mean, obviously he's going for a queen pop here, right? He's just got rages over the top of these, and of course he gets the queen pop. The, that queen is pretty sure she's dead. Maybe she's not. No, she's still shooting. So did not get the queen pop. That's a little bit scary. Uh, queen is still up, still shooting at that hound over there. Um, loons are working their way over. Uh, that hound pops. This air defense down here is not going to go down, though it's very, very close. And this hound actually takes that air defense down all on its own. Um, so we'll see this here. Hound takes out the air defense before it has a chance to pop. And that was basically clean up with a queen here that has just a little bit of, a little bit of juice left in her. Um, a little bit scary here, but... Uh, these loons are going to move over. It takes a single loon to drop, and that's it. She is gone, and that is Tree Stars in the bag. Nice job, Bazu. A little bit scary there for a moment. Drops his king just as cleanup last minute, but uh, yeah, 
I guess he thought he didn't need... Oh, no, I'm sorry. He did have 20 loons. My bad. Oh, he, he lured the CC with three loons. That's what happened. I just missed that. Okay, um, number 13. Uh, this is Clutch. Um, like I said, Clutch had a six-pack, and Clutch has been doing this new type of Veiler where he brings a couple of witches along with, and it seems to work really, really well. Those skellies do a great job distracting point defenses. Uh, notice here he's got a, a, a giant and two, ho or two um, hogs, and that's just so that he can pull the CC. So he starts out up here um, setting a funnel with, with the dual purpose of also taking out this air defense, which can be prob a problem for Veelers. Uh, Wizzy walks up there, pops that air defense all on his own. Uh, CC was pulled out down here, and CC kill is about done, and that is it. He's going to start setting his funnel down here with a couple of whiz, and as soon as that funnel is set, in comes the bowlers, in comes the witches, and in comes the, the healers that go with those bowlers and witches. So this is sort of like the um, modified, well, it's not really. I, I mean, it's it's sort of like the Bowler Witch Attack at Town Hall 10, but it's not really like the Bowler Witch Attack at Town Hall 10 because you've also got um, eight Valks coming in here. And so Valks are in, and Bowlers stroll down the center here. Queen is in, King is in. And keeping that healer on them is quite important. It works out very, very nicely here. Uh, queen, ten, or those healers tend to move back and forth um, amongst troops as they're pushing their way through. Uh, these uh, bowlers and witches are still up and still just crushing down the side of this base. Uh, King and Valks have now popped on the outside. We've still got a healer kind of on them, keeping those Valks up, which is nice. Uh, there are no air defenses left, so nothing really to target these last uh, healers. Um, I don't even know if he winds up using this uh, last spell here. I don't think so. I mean, it's it's unnecessary at this point. Uh, but that is it. It is clean up. Ah, he throws the spell down just for the heck of it. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Clutch. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to look at number 16, and this is... Frank, not the Frank that we used to know from 2.0, but same same account. Uh, but he uh, Yo-Yo now uses this account. Um, Frank is retired, so Yo-Yo started using it. And you'll notice some things. Obviously, Yo-Yo is used to the Town Hall 10, Town Hall 11 gig, because he starts throwing uh, archers down on these um, <laughs> on these things that are easy to pick up a, a, a percent on. Um, it, it is nice. It kind of helps with the cleanup right off the bat. This is what I want to show. He's going to get, so he's got two hounds and 18 loons. He's going to get all of the air defenses, and this was by design. So he drops an earthquake spell, and he's going to put a rage on, or I mean a zap on each one of these um, ADs, and then one right in the middle. So when you've got two air defenses that are separated by one wall or one space, you can get both of those air defenses with two zaps, three zaps, I'm sorry, uh, one on each, one in the middle, and an EQ. This is a question that comes up a lot. Can I get this with three zaps? And that the answer to that question is, yeah, you can. It's right there. Uh, so here's part of the problem uh, with bringing two hounds when you are not going to have any air defenses, and that is um, the hounds just don't like to pop. And so uh, these, <laughs> these loons wind up taking an awful lot of damage from these little skellies. And finally the skellies switch over to the hounds. And you love when that happens because you know that once the skellies have switched over to the hounds, they're going to eat that hound until the hound pops and then the hound will kill those skellies and the rest of your loons will be safe. But boy, those, those skellies on loons are just one of the worst things out there. Uh, but finally, those skellies do pop that hound, um, and the pups immediately eat the skellies up. Uh, Queen is coming in. This hound is going to eventually pop right here with the, uh, yep, there it is, with the last Teslas. Uh, push through these last four Teslas, and that is it. 
Uh, tree stars in the bag. Very nice job. Yo, yo. All right. Uh, number 18, Big Tex. Like I said, Big Tex just got promoted to 2.0. Congrats, buddy. Um, let's see. So Big Tex is coming with a uh, quad Lalo. Um, pulls out the CC using just that uh, just that baby drag. Uh, Queen is going to kill this CC off. This is an interesting CC with a, a giant in there as, as kind of a tank and then some other uh, garbage. And once that queen is distracted, he is going to send in some wall breakers to try and get these um, Teslas. And he gets pretty good value here. He is going to wind up getting, I think, two of these Teslas with his queen and get the enemy queen. Uh, does not get all three Teslas. Pops her ability there. Enemy queen is down. Um, now his queen is taking an awful lot of fire. And so, here we go. Tesla still up over here, but sends in a hound and a couple of loons to path towards that uh, air defense. Um, similarly over here, sends in a hound and a couple of loons to path. A couple more loons, brings in a third hound on this lower air defense. It's unfortunate because, man, this is a little bit scary here. There goes his last hound in on this bottom air defense. He still has an air defense up, um, and he has deployed all of his loons at this point. So that hound is still up. Now, he does have a heal spell, and this is this is oftentimes what you see as a kind of a, a substitute for um, having that fifth hound for a penta, is a heal spell that you can use once your loons get up close to this air defense because you, you kind of figure that your air defense... Is or, or that your loons are not going to have the same kind of tanking that they would if there was a, a fifth lava hound in there, and, and obviously that was the case here. Uh, but still plenty of loons left. Um, gets his cleanup whiz down. Uh, does have a troll Tesla over here that he's going to have to take care of or kind of wait for these very slow loons to get over there and get. But fortunately, pups are in there doing lots of work, and it is nothing but cleanup, so we will speed up through this. And there we go. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Big Tex. Okay. Number 20 was hit by Bullseye. I love this hit. So this is a Queen Walk Lalo with two jumps. And, oh, no, it's not the Queen Walk Lalo. Oh, that must be Papa Smurf. Um, Bullseye. Also, uh, this is Shubham Mishra. So you've seen a couple of uh, recaps with Shub in there. Uh, he's coming with a Witch Slap. Um, now, one of the tricky things with the Witch Slap uh, is when you have these mortars that are sitting out here, one, they're very deadly to uh, uh, witches and also to mostly, I mean, they're very deadly to skellies. Uh, so, anyway, clears his path very nicely and in with the uh, Golem and Bowlers. I mean, I seldom, seldom see this attack fail. It's such an overpowered attack. Um, bowlers start to come back around, then they leave, then they come back, then they leave. They don't know what they're doing. Finally, oh, there they go. All right. So now he's got all of his bowlers in. Um, he's got his golem in there. Golem is now under heal. He's used every spell, but notice he has not used his king's ability or his queen's ability yet. And his queen has not taken any damage. His king is just finally starting to take damage. Queen takes out that air defense, or I mean that um, expo. And this expo over here is going to be gone in just a second. Uh, what we're looking at now, two point defenses, three point defenses, and um, a couple of splash defenses, and that is it. These air defenses are not really going to matter that much um, because once you push through the splash and the point, um, who cares if it takes out your healers, right? And so, uh, continuing to push through here. I mean, this is just how this attack goes, right? Push right through the base, and it is tree stars in the bag. Lots and lots of skellies. Uh, nice job, bullseye. Okay. 
Uh, last one that we're going to watch is Papa Smurf. And so Papa Smurf is coming with a Queen Walk Lalo. Uh, notice that he's got a jump here. That jump is for his queen. Um, I thought this was actually a really, really great idea. Um, I, I like the way that he does this. He's going to take out this air defense. He's going to take out this air defense. And the plan is to jump right here by this expo. Uh, it doesn't quite happen. <laughs> jump goes down and Queen decides just to shoot all this other stuff instead. Uh, jump finally wears out and Queen just decides to turn around and, and, and head out anyway. Um, but he only has two... Um, two <clears throat> uh, hounds, so a little bit scary, but uh, you can make two hounds work, especially when your air defenses are out here easy to get. So he has his king down, we'll speed this up just a little bit. Queen is in here, he's wall broken in, um, gets the CC lure, kills the CC, takes out that uh, storage there, and then comes over, drops a rage, pushes through that air defense really quickly, and then gets that high HP uh, dark elixir storage. Uh, skellies are up, unfortunately turns to focus on skellies instead of taking the jump like she was supposed to. Then she focuses on the king instead of taking the jump like she was supposed to, has to pop the ability there. Then she's focusing on these defenses instead of taking the jump like she's supposed to. And, of course, that is how things kind of go here. Up here, the enemy queen is uh, getting taken out completely by Skelly's uh, modified queen pop with no rage spell. And that is it. It is tree stars in the bag. Nothing but cleanup at this point. Nice job, Papa Smurf. All right, so there we go. Uh, not quite what we wanted, although uh, props to Goodman, uh, Goodman Samurai. This th these guys are um, they're a great clan. I think this makes them six and zero in the CWL. Uh, so a very very tough clan to beat. Um, two dips, uh, two dip fails was was the difference here. Our nines actually outperformed their nines. Um, yeah, I mean, a 10v10 triple would have been nice, but they're hard to come by. Um, and just, you know, uh, a few small things went wrong for us. But uh, either way, very, very good war and good luck, um, Gunma Samurai. Uh, hopefully we'll meet, you guys, meet up with you guys in the uh, playoffs. All right, this is Dr. D from One Hive Invicta saying clash on.